This is the grassland, a vast expanse of lonely meadow, a place for a poet to dream, a place of open sky and endless wide view. But as he looked, a poet would soon see that the grassland is really a community. He would notice a red-tailed hawk wheeling in the sunlit sky, and he might wonder how it feels to fly so smoothly. Or he might wonder what the sharp eyes of the hawk see on the ground below. A meadow mouse, one of the hawk's favorite foods. Or a baby rabbit, small and lifeless in the grass. Or a family of striped skunks. And perhaps the poet would notice that life in the grasslands is very often a fight. Even now, a rival tries to chase the hawk from the sky. A satyr butterfly and a bee fly fight over the nectar of the vervain flower. Perhaps a poet would notice that creatures which live here are adapted very well to life in the grasslands. This brewer's blackbird, for instance, finds every necessity of life. Her nest, well hidden from enemy eyes, is filled to the brim with squalling, hungry young who eat the insects the parents find all around them. Young birds, like these brewer's blackbirds, always seem hungry. Plenty of food helps them grow rapidly. Soon they'll leave home and find their own food find mates and have young ones of their own. This snug nest with its grass roof is the home of a meadow lark. The meadow lark lays from three to seven eggs, but five is a good average. The lovely call of the meadow lark is unmistakable, and its scaly colored yellow breast, crossed by a black V, makes it easy to identify. But the color and markings of its back help to conceal it as it searches through the grasses for food. The pretty eggs soon become gaping mouths. Meadowlarks, like other birds, eat many insects and are a valuable aid to man in helping to control insect pests. From here, few could guess that the meadowlark's nest is by. Bright and colorful spring flowers grow among the grasses. Scarlet globe mallow carpets the prairie floor. The prickly pear cactus thrives in the warm sunshine, but the delicate spiderwort, which opens early, withers quickly in the mid-morning heat. The stately yucca stands tall upon the hillside. Not far away, animals have dug up some of the grasses and flowers. These are prairie dogs, living together in a colony or prairie dog village. Prairie dogs make underground homes and dig many underground runways. With their sharp claws and strong legs, they can quickly dig up the ground. Prairie dogs are active little creatures, always busy eating, digging, or playing. But sometimes they seem to ground and gossip and run for the safety of their underground burrows when there's any sign of danger. Just now, a fat, sleek skunk passes by. But the skunk doesn't seem interested in prairie dogs. It's off on business of its own. Although the prairie dogs are taking no chances, here's an old fellow in the shelter of one of the burrows who doesn't seem to be frightened. It's a burrowing owl. These owls often make their homes in abandoned prairie dog burrows. It's on its way, the prairie dogs soon come outside again and begin their barking and eating and gossiping once more. Food is a problem for all living creatures. Some of these ants, going along different pathways from their nest, are searching for food, while others are returning to their nest, carrying the bits of food they have found. Often the food an ant carries is larger than the ant itself, and often the cooperation of a number of the colony is needed to bring home a large insect such as this caterpillar.
Nearby is a nest of wild bees. They constantly buzz in and out, carrying loads of food to the nest, from flowers like this purple bench, which produce the pollen and nectar that the bees eat and feed to the bee larvae in the nest. Grasses make good eating for many animals. The prairie hare or jackrabbit thrives on vegetation and derives the energy necessary to outrun its enemies. But the grasses and flowers need food too. Much of their food material comes from the rich prairie soil. The decayed remains of last season's flowers and grasses add to the richness of the soil and in turn to the beauty of the prairie from year to year. Droppings and dead bodies of animal life also add richness. This grasshopper, like some other insects, eats vegetation now and will help nourish vegetation when it dies. Unless a sparrow hawk or some other animal eats it first. But it is well that some grassland animals feed on insects, for without control, insects might soon destroy all vegetation. Some animals feed upon other animals. The meadow mouse, which the skunk finds to its liking, has met the fate of many small animals. The larger creatures have enemies too, but the skunk is enjoying her mouth too well to notice the approach of a coyote on the prowl for its dinner. When she sees the coyote, she heads for her den. A wise coyote will recognize the markings of the skunk, especially if it has recently encountered one. Sure enough, this coyote is showing good sense as it heads for better hunting where things are not likely to be so difficult. Better game for a coyote might be one of these well-fattened pronghorn antelope. Coyotes occasionally kill and eat young antelope, but the antelope seems to be on the alert. They have a special lookout posted to guard the herd against surprise. They can spot an enemy far away. No coyote can catch them now. Of the huge herds of buffalo which once roamed the grasslands, only a few remain. They are protected within wildlife refuges. These shaggy creatures, also known as the American bison, are the largest prairie animals. They feed their bulky bodies on the grass of the prairie, while cowbirds eat ticks and insects that hide in the shaggy coats of the big animals. This is a good example of the interdependence of grassland life. Buffalo eat grass, while the cowbirds eat insects, which in turn feed on the buffalo. The buffalo has other prairie enemies besides insects. The wolf, a prowler in the night, is powerful enough to kill a young buffalo. Usually it hunts with others of its kind in a group or pack. Yes, the grassland is a community a balanced pattern of life based on the grass. But it is by no means a land where only grasses grow. Flowers of many kinds can be found there. Birds of many species make their homes and find livings there. Insects are abundant. And many animals, large and small, find the grassland suited to their needs. Some eat grasses, and others eat animals that eat the grasses. Living together within the great plants and animals are each a part of the bigger picture, a community of living things which depend on each other. Yes, this is life in the grassland. <laughs>